Welcome to Seth's Daily Podcast. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. Thank you guys for subscribing. We are uh, blessed enough to have an interview with Joe Teddy. How are you doing today? Doing good, man. How's thing is, uh, things in Kentucky? <laughs> doing good, man. It's great. Awesome. So uh, let's talk about your uh, book that uh, you did. Yeah, Lone Operator. Yeah, man. Um, it came out last year, uh, around April, and uh, it's my first book. And I, to be honest with you, I, I really wasn't uh, planning on writing a book. I, I did probably 10 years prior, and I just kind of like, eh, I kind of forgot about it. And then I was contacted by a publishing company, and uh, the gentleman that owns the company, uh, John, is a super cool guy, and very he was very helpful. Um, and and we, we had some really good synergy, so I decided to do it. It took about a year to write it. Uh, 11 months and uh, it's basically an autobiography um, and kind of like a lessons learned uh, in my life and, and what I've done and kind of you know how you can kind of apply it to your life and, and let's face it look people that write books and autobiographies and try to preach to other people that you know you need to do what I did that's complete BS um, everybody's life's different it, the way I look at reading a book is that if you can get like one gold nugget out of it just one it was worth buying it, and you know i've had a unique life you know in military and special operations and government and being on tv and stuff but um i think there's some things in it that if you read it you'll definitely get um you'll get a few good really good gold nuggets out of it and and that was my my mission was to write a book that somebody could read that was relatively short about 230 pages or so um and um when they're done reading it, basically go, wow, I actually got something out of that book, you know? Yeah. Let's talk about uh, you uh, killing that boar on a dual survivor. That was amazing, man. Yeah, I got a lot of, I got to tell you, man, I got a lot of hate mail over that. I actually had a few death threats, believe it or not, um, from people that, um, you know, animal rights type people and just, I don't know, just saying it was barbaric and when in fact, if you watch the video, the thing was dead in about eight seconds, you know, and I've got friends that hunt with bows and rifles and, and you know, they shoot a deer and the thing runs off and, you know, uh, this thing was killed instantly, you know, I dropped it with the spear and then I, I finally finished it off with, um, with my knife, but it was very quick. If you look at it, it happened in, in seconds. But, um, yeah, it was probably one of the, uh, I don't know, one of the highlights of my shooting on dual survival. Um, and, um, you know, it, what was really funny, a lot of people don't know this, but we had sat there for probably mm, six hours and the sun was going down and the producer, he was like actually next to me, he's like, dude, you've got about 30 minutes of sunlight left and then we got to... <laughs> And then, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes later, you could start hearing this thing, you know, making it sound and coming down. And you can actually smell them or have a really strong smell to them. I'm not <laughs> sure why, but you can smell them. And we, we and so we got very, very lucky. Got real lucky. Didn't it make the top 10 list on uh, Discovery's uh, kills? Yeah, it was actually number one. <laughs> um, yeah, they had the top 10 and... You know, they had all kinds of um, other, you know, hunts from, from you know, uh, Dave Canterbury and Cody Lundeen and myself and um, other people. And um, they started at number 10 and uh, went to number one. And it was funny because I was watching it and I'm like, wow, I guess I didn't make the cut. And then it was number one. And uh, it was it was pretty – I was told that they had to edit the, the actual kill scene – um down so much um for people to watch because it was pretty bad they edited out a lot of stuff that happened you know but um yeah you remember kids are watching and you know you have to have um some some restraint when you're doing kill scenes like that hunting scenes so um but um discovery did a very good job at uh, editing it at editing it and um making it a little more palatable you know yeah, what was you thinking whenever uh, they sent you out to uh, first meet and you had to find Matt? What was you thinking when they <laughs> when they had you on the boat? Yeah, so that was in Panama, 
and they had brought Matt out there prior to me. And, and, and mm -hmm. I don't know how long he was out there for a while. I think three weeks. I watched the episode last night. Yeah, he was out there for a while. And um, my job was to come in. They, they gave me a map of like his last known position, kind of. And um, they dropped me off on a boat. And I kind of tried. I went in. I was using the map, got on this hill, hilltop and started just basically, um, you know, uh, train associating. But then I picked up this trail. I found out where he got an animal. I found his big old gut pile. And then um, I saw some spore on the ground and which way he was going. So I kind of just headed in that direction. And I ended up, uh, um, you know, basically seeing him sitting up on this hill and he was up there. He had a hooch. He had a really nice shelter set up. And um, it looked like it was for long term. But uh, Matt was a, a pleasure to work with. He um, he's a very humble guy. And... Um, extreme i mean he's forgotten more about survival stuff that i'll ever know um but you got to remember i wasn't brought onto the show to be that survival guy they already had me you know matt was him i was a spec ops guy to me if you're out there rubbing sticks together and trying to make a fire to me that's just foolish <laughs> why wouldn't you have a lighter or a yeah, fair sodium rod or a match something and, and that's what people don't understand is it's, it's, you know, survival in a situation like that is all about preparedness. But unfortunately on the show, they didn't set us up for preparedness. They gave us some things, but they wanted us to show how you can survive with a minimal amount of stuff. And it sucks. I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, it, it sucks. That's not what you want to do. You know, you don't want to be going somewhere um, and, um, you know, getting on your ATV and going for a two hour drive out in the middle of the boonies when you've been driving 20 miles an hour. And then, you know, two hours later, your ATV conks out. Now you got a 40 mile walk back. You're spending the night in the woods for sure. If not two, you know, depending on your physical fitness. I listened to one of your interviews with a, a great podcast called chasing the grass. And they yeah. asked you a question about a woman asking you to send them a dirty shirt. Yeah, man. Yeah, I never quite understood this fan stuff. I never – It's I, to this day, I don't get it. But I had several women ask me to send them, like, a shirt that I wore, my, you know, undershirt, my underwear, my whatever, and, and not to wash it and to send it to them. That's crazy, man. <laughs> um, you know, uh, whatever. It's <laughs> – a little out there um but uh yeah i mean you just have fans they you know they like the show yeah and uh what was you thinking when you and matt uh your first kill when you guys killed that boar in the water oh yeah um that was uh on one of the islands um i think it was in the Gizuma or the bahamas or something but yeah, you know, Matt had a very specific way. He hunted with an atlatl, uh, and he was really good with it. I mean, and it, and for those of you that don't know what an atlatl is, you, you Google it. It's pretty cool. It's actually one of the oldest weapons. It actually outdates the bow and arrow. But he was really, really good with this thing. And, um, you know, he plugged a, uh, a feral pig. Um, it was a smaller one, but... Um, he has a very certain way he hunts and he's very respectful when he kills an animal and prays over it and all of that. And, you know, I get it. Um, you know, I never made, made fun of him, you know, and when I first saw him do that, I, I kind of understood I was dealing with a little bit different individual and, but I respected it and I respected Matt. Um, but I did see uh, right off the bat how, how good he was with that thing. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah, he's yeah. Really, if he got within 30, 40 feet of an animal, it's had it, you know, <laughs> it, he, it, and probably even farther. He was probably good out to maybe 40 yards, actually, to be honest, 30, 40 yards with that thing. Um, but, um, but yeah, he was Matt was um, an extremely gifted athlete, um, very, very physically strong, uh, insane endurance. He could climb, swim, run. So I got to do some really 
uh, cool stuff with him. Cody, on the other hand, you know, um, you know, wasn't really he didn't wasn't in the water that much. Um, I mean, he was in shape. Don't get me wrong, the guy was in mm-hmm. shape. He went to the gym often, but he just, you know, because he was barefoot, there were certain things he couldn't do. You know, Matt wore sandals, so it, it kind of, um, uh, you know, helped Matt when it came to moving faster or if we had to move really quick, he was able to do it. You know. What was you uh, thinking when uh, you and uh, Cody had to go, like, scuba diving to Fiji on a deserted island, I think? Oh, yeah, that was uh, – yeah, that was in Fiji. And um, the, the scenario started off with a bunch of scuba – we found some scuba tanks um, that were actually dropped in the water. The scenario was guy was diving, got caught, ditched his tanks – and came up, and anyway, I had to swim down, get the tanks, which is basic stuff. It's like doing a ditch and dawn. It was easy. But um, I basically had the scuba gear on, and Cody was on the surface. I think it was floating on some coconuts or something. I'm trying to remember. I think he put a bunch of coconuts together to, like, float on, and then I basically towed him across this bay um, and uh, ran into some sharks. You know, you're always going to run into sharks. Ran into a really big tiger shark. I think they even got it on video. Uh, I don't know if you've watched that one or not. But uh, there was a pretty big tiger shark there. Um, but anyway, yeah, we got the other side because we were on this tiny little island that had nothing on it. And then there was a huge island, probably um, – it wasn't that far, maybe a half a mile away, you know. But, again, this gets back to, you know, you better be physically fit if you're going to do something like that because, you know, a lot of people never swim a half mile. I mean, <laughs> You know, so uh, where can people get your book at? Yeah, so uh, the easiest way, guys, just go to Amazon and just and just type in "Loan Operator" by Joseph Deddy, and you can get a hardback, uh, softback, or a uh, Kindle version. Yeah, and uh, what a, you got a website where you like to uh, teach people the survival skills, right? Yeah, so I've got a lot going on right now, man. I, I got a lot of irons in the fire. Um, you're, that that company is called Loan Operator Inc. So if you go to www.loanoperatorinc.com, it's on there. But uh, I'm actually starting um, a, a new program called WETC, W-E-T-C, and it stands for Warrior's Edge Training Course. And it's a three-day course, uh, three days, two nights, uh, and um, you basically come here, uh, lodgings provided, foods provided, and we go through a very, very intensive three days of training. Uh, 14 hour days, you're not on vacation, and we're going to talk about all kinds of different uh, subject matter. Uh, it's very eclectic course, you know, everything from, you know, uh, what kind of knife you should carry um to you know hostage survival apprehension avoidance tactical reality the do's and don'ts when you shoot you know shooting an m4 uh, a carbine and i'm actually using uh military grade um airsoft guns that way uh people have never shot one before i don't want to have to worry about you know any any issues mm-hmm. with people that never handled weapons like that you know, um, understanding the color code of awareness and the Oda loop and training scars and Kim's game. It's a, it took me about a month to put it all together, but it is a, put it this way. If you were to go to those courses individually, it would cost you an arm and a leg. It would be inexpensive traveling. And that's why I'm doing it all in one course. And so it's here in North Carolina, about, uh, about an hour outside of Charlotte. So uh, if you are interested, for those of your watch, just uh, send me an email at info at SpartanAmericana.com. And that Spartan and then Americana is like America, but Americana. Uh, and I'll give you all the information. You can put it on here and you can send it to the guys. Um, and you can also get a hold of me on, on my Facebook page. You can go to Spartan Americana Training on Facebook and you can message me through there. Um, but, um, yeah, we have our first class, uh, in March full and filled up in two days. Um, and then I'm actually putting another course together in April and hopefully run, try to run one a month. 
Well, thanks for being on today, man. You got it, man. Anytime. If you, uh, if you need anything or want to do another one, just give me a shout. Yes, sir. All righty. You have a good day, man. All righty. Thanks, bro. Thanks. God bless. This has been the interview with Joe Teddy. I want to thank him for doing the interview. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. I want to thank you guys for subscribing. Y'all have a good day, and uh, God bless.